welcome to a special episode of the Musician's Gear. Today I am joined by master performer and guitarist Jordan Saucier. Welcome, Jordan. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so how today is going to work is um, Jordan brought his FM3 fractal system, right? That's correct. And um, we're going to kind of showcase it throughout today's episode. And then also we have this bowl right here, questions from fans. And then also I wrote a couple questions in here asking you to marry me and things like that. Yeah. Um, so let's just jump into it. So how long have you had the FM3? Yeah, I've actually had the FM3 since um, I probably had it about six months now, roughly. I got it this past summer, summer 2020, but I've been an avid fractal user since about, oh, fall 2016. But I've had the FM3, their newest floor unit, since the summer. Okay, and before the FM3, you had? Yeah, the Fractal Audio AX8. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen you use that one before. I've seen mm -hmm. you use this a couple times, mm -hmm. and I'm always just like, what the crap? Yeah. <laughs> and if you can't see in the cameras here, he also has um, an extension to it, which mm -hmm. is the floor pedal. Is mm -hmm. that what that is? Yeah, there? exactly. It's the Fractal Audio FC6. Basically, it's their uh, proprietary um, foot controller that is very plug and play. It's connected by it's connected and powered by XLR and it just immediately knows what to do. You don't have to program anything. Um, but basically, it's a glorified MIDI controller, but it's also really nice to just buy theirs. Um, and then, in addition to that, I also have the expression pedal, which, again, you don't have to use their expression pedal, but gosh, you know, life is short. You may as well just buy theirs, and it's, it lasts a really long time. My last one lasted basically three years, and wow. I would put it in a backpack, throw it on the plane, and it wasn't even really that well protected, and it would, it lasted a really long time before it started to whack out on me a little bit. Okay, and so this one's bigger than the, your previous one too, the the expression pedal, correct? No, so actually, it's the, same size. it's the same size. What's smaller is this unit here. That was kind of what Fractal changed up for this round, is instead of a bigger unit that had eight buttons, they went with a smaller unit that had three buttons that actually has a lower list price than the AX8. The AX8 was like, 1300 or 1400 brand new when it first came out. This unit was a thousand dollars when it first came out because it's got fewer foot switches and a smaller footprint, which is why this looks bigger. And the idea is that you buy the extension pedal and the price roughly matches what the AX8 was now. Okay, so this yeah. was like three, four hundred dollars? It was actually five, so it's a little bit more. Uh, money well spent, I definitely don't regret it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so it, it, that's kind of, they went with that model to where it's almost like kind of build your own rig type thing. Okay, mm -hmm. no, very cool. I mean, I like how it's smaller because I remember your old system, it was just, I don't know, it seemed too big. Yeah. I mean, for like a smaller stage, you know, for instance. Yeah, you know, and smaller stages, but also I would even say like what you can fit it in. Because when you have two units, even if that's a lot of extra stuff, you can still go, ah, oh, you know, gosh, I'm, I can only really bring a backpack to this gig. But you know what? I really only need two sounds, so three switches is more than enough. Let me just bring this, and I do that all the time. If I'm in a hurry, leaving the house, and I really don't want to make two trips or out, in and out of the car, I'll just grab this and know it's got everything I need. And then if I've got a gig where it's like, all right, you know, I need a lot of flexibility, I'll make sure I bring the foot switch. Okay. The extra. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I like that. So what's your favorite sound to create with the FM3, like, so far? Mmm, oh man, that's, that's super tough. I, my favorite sound, there's a lot of wacky sounds on this thing, so I have a lot of fun with those, but I'm, I am a working guy, so I don't really ever gig with those wacky sounds. Mostly, I just really, I love any of the Mesa, Mesa Boogie stuff on here. That all sounds really good. I love the mid-gainy edge of breakup sounds, so like, uh, this is almost kind of edge of breakup-y. It's kind of clean, and then if I hit it, it kind of starts to break up, and then I come a little bit more on the volume knob. Switch to a humbucker. It's a nice, nice, really great thing. And then if I need more, I just switch to another scene. 
and then I've got all the gain I need. But those are kind of like, those are my meat and potato sounds. I wouldn't say they're my favorite sounds, but they're just what I use the most. And um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for those that you don't know, Jordan performs in how many, how many bands is it? Uh, you know, it varies uh, month okay. to month, but um, just a bunch of different bands. Probably I can perform with anywhere from like three or four or five different acts within a month to 12 or even 18 different acts within oh, a month, wow. depending on what month it is, what state the world is in at the time, yeah. and all the above. So, um, yeah, just a bunch of different stuff. So I got to be able to switch between clean, dirty, country clean, more funk clean, all these different sounds. And more importantly, also have the flexibility uh, to switch the sounds how I need them on any given gig. Yeah. Um, for recording, it doesn't matter as much. But for live, a big thing I have to make a point of, um, if I'm playing with an artist that's got a special song, that's got a really unique tone that I just need to be able to hit one button and all the sounds switch to that sound. Yeah. Um, I gotta have that program. So really that's, that's actually where a lot of the magic with this unit for me comes from is the ability to kind of just take the same sound I used maybe in the studio and know I can hit a button, boom, there it is live. Yeah. And you say, uh, you told me before that you, when you edit things on this system, you actually don't, you know, do it manually by your hand, mm -hmm. you use a software to mm -hmm. change the sound. So what, what software is that? So it's Fractal's free uh, FM3 software. You can download it. Um, even if you don't have the unit, you can download it. You can't do anything with it, but um, you connect it through USB. Also, that's, that was a new addition to this unit, um, was the USB does more than just act as a, um, control. A, a, meth, a pathway for the controller, it actually also acts as an interface. So okay. I can throw this in my backpack and in the hotel room, I can plug this directly into my computer and it's the interface as well. So it, it oh, does wow. send audio through USB, so that's really nice. Um, but the, the point is, is it really is nice to have your computer and have that uh, software so that you're not kind of working on a small screen. All these knobs, I know enough about these knobs to fix things, need, need I do that on a gig. Yeah. Um, and then also the FM3 has a bigger color screen um, than the AX8 and you know, some of the older units. And so that makes it a little easier to uh, tweak some of that stuff too, but it's still, it's too easy to plop it down in my studio. I have all the cables routed, I just pop it in. And I can edit everything on my computer. Okay, right. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I remember the screen for the, your, your old system mm -hmm. was quite a bit. What was like a quarter of that size? It was a, yeah, it was like maybe quarter, half the size, and it was all green. It kind of looked like an old video game. And this one's definitely a lot nicer, uh, a lot nicer screen. So you can do a little bit more on this one. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So mm -hmm. no playing Atari on it anymore. <laughs> no, no more, no more games. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, I mean, every time I see you play, I'm jealous. I'm just like, man, I gotta get myself one of those. But maybe one day. Yeah, yeah, man. They're they're great. I love them. Um, but also, man, it's like, I, sometimes I show up to gigs and I tweak the tone really fast and I don't think it sounds great. And no matter how much money I spend on this or how good of a, you know, how well I play that particular night, if I didn't dial in the sound very well or if I did something that was kind of dumb, I'm stuck with it for that night until I tweak it. And so it doesn't, you know, it's all about what you do with the gear that you have. Um, so I think you could probably even spend half as much and get something and if you know how to really tweak it you can get some pretty good sounds that i'm still biased and i still think this is the best of the best i'm yeah. you know, I'm, a, I'm a fanboy. you can call me that um but boy it's really the same thing with you know an instrument like a guitar you know you gotta having a nice guitar is great but it's all about how you play it having a nice modeler and effects processor is great but you gotta dial it in and yeah, you know definitely. what and, that, and that's what's nice about the factory presets is they're already very dialed in by the, the Fractal Audio guys. And so if you use those as a starting point, you're usually headed somewhere pretty good. Yeah. I can't say the same for my, uh, what is it, um, ME80 mm -hmm. by Boss. There's some of the presets on there that, like, they're pretty terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's some, there's some really good ones, too. Mm -hmm. But So it's like hit and miss. And so mm -hmm. when I first got it, I was using just a lot of presets. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember... Uh, what gig it was, but it, 
one gig I was playing and so one of the professors said something at Snow. They're oh like, wow. Like, why is your tone so terrible? <laughs> <laughs> and so Yikes. My, my next lesson was with Jamie and we uh we tweaked a lot. <laughs> oh wow! And that was like the whole lesson was based on that. And oh, nice. I remember that. So I, I mean, that's a, just kind of bringing up that point. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't tweak things the right way, you can completely ruin your sound or make it really good mm -hmm. for a gig until you change it again. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure you've had those experiences, like you were saying, experiences where you changed it for a gig. and You're like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, it was uh, it was actually this past gig. Um, I could even I could even. Well, shoot! I'll just show you. You don't have to keep this. But we have the technology. We right? have the technology. So this past weekend I played some country music and it's a country crossover band. So the point of the band is that it's kind of country, but it's also more like pop country. So I have a, I have a specific preset for that. You know, I named it appropriately Renegades. So I've got a decent um, compressed sound, compressed clean, kind of... It's kind of got plenty of grit. And I've got them a little bit more mid gainy, so it's definitely not gonna take your take your eyebrows off. But it's got enough to rock. And then I've got my drive sound. This is where I went wrong. Um, it's not bothering me so much right now in this instance, but it's a little woofy um, when you're on ears or through a bigger system yeah. and it just kind of bugged me. I didn't quite dial that in. I used the amp that I thought would be good, but I didn't really use my ears at home and I just ended up not being super happy with it. So the whole the whole uh, weekend it was just kind of like, ah, it's fine, you know, for my for my main drive sound. But it just, it just always seemed like it wasn't t a tight low end. You want that yeah. tight low end in country, you flubby low end. That's more of like a classic rock thing. Country, modern country rock sound, you want that. Um... You want a little bit more tight. And like I said, it's not bothering me right now. But, yeah. but, but I, I think yeah. I maybe hear a little bit of what you're saying. Yeah. But I mean, it could be like also what you were listening, you know, hearing mm -hmm. through. I mean, we got these JBLs over here. Yeah, and the JBL is a smaller cone, so it's probably not even reproducing some of that woofy low end that I wasn't digging. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of it's going to be your skill set with the unit, your familiar familiarity with the unit. And as an aside, I would I would honestly say people who are shopping for a modeler and they're trying to really nitpick and decide which one they want to go with. I think we're at the point now where if you get one of the big ones, the big guys, the Fractal, the Kemper, even you know the Lion 6 Helix, it's great. What really you almost need to look for is form factor and CPU switching capabilities. Like, oh, yeah. you, got, you gotta get, like if you're always traveling and you need this amount of, this, you can bring this much stuff and you have this kind of show and you need this many sounds, a big part of, which unit you decide is the I.O. And, and all that stuff. It's not really this, the ability to get a good sound out of the unit because they all sound really good and you can yeah. all dial them in to sound really good. It's about, uh, like I have a friend who agrees that this unit has the, probably some of the best modeling, but he doesn't use this unit and he uses a, a competitor simply because they offer in their line a form factor, so the Helix Stomp, that just happens to meet his needs the best. Yeah. And so he only uses his in the studio. Okay. No, that's interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. I've also heard, like, I can't remember who it was, but it was an old rocker. He was, like, saying, us, like, players nowadays and guitar players have it so, so good because, like, all the yeah. sounds we can get, like, you can pretty much get anything. And if you know how to use it well enough, mm -hmm. you you know, I spend, uh, I don't know, more than, a couple, you know, a couple hundred dollars, at least, you know, $500, mm -hmm. anything above that range, it's going to be great. And, oh, yeah. You know, like... Some yeah. of the top line stuff back in the 80s, you know, and the 70s is like some of the cheapest yeah. stuff you can get. Like, mm -hmm. not, not necessarily, but some yeah. is some of the cheaper stuff that you can get from like Guitar Center or you yeah. know, whatever. So. Yeah, heck, I'd even say, you know, sometimes the thing with digital units is you can show up to a gig and this has been super reliable, but you never know what can happen in transit, especially if you've had it for a couple of years. You might hit the power button and for whatever reason it doesn't power on. There is no... Well, maybe it's the tube, maybe it's the, it's just like, it's done, it's toast. So what I do is I travel with an iPad always, obviously, 
I mean, it's, I think all musicians, iPads are super useful. Yeah. Um, and then I have a little iOS interface. It's like the size of like a lipstick deal. And between those two things, I can immediately switch to iPad um, rig. Yeah. And I can just go for it. In fact, I even have the app on my phone too, just in case. But uh, that That's really makes it capable. Oh, and I have the cable, the, uh, the Y cable splitter. So if this were to ever go down, I have a um, bias effects, positive grid. I have that app ready to go. And you know what, is it as good as this? No, I don't even think, I think you can even tell a bigger difference, but it still sounds really good. And 90% of the gigs that I do, it would work really well for. If I was, you know, touring with a, an A-list artist and it had to be just right, or I was like in an original band where it was really music focused and tone focused and art focused, it, it might be a, more of a buzzkill, but you know, if I'm playing top country hits at the casino, it probably doesn't matter if the tone's spot on perfect. It's more or less, does it sound decent and does it, can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's important. I mean, 